Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome, everyone in the chat. Honk if Garrett creeps you out. And welcome, welcome everyone <laughs> listening and watching wherever you are. Uh, I'm a reality Amanda. I'm here with James from My Take on Reality. Hello. Hello. Good and evening, everyone. Good evening. <laughs> How very <laughs> sophisticated. And Sarah from Reality Squad. Hello, hello. Uh, tonight we're going over season five, episode three of Seeking Sister Wife. How are you two doing tonight? I'm well. I'm doing excellent. Doing excellent. Okay. Very excited to talk about this. I've been uh, out the loop for a minute, so I'm good. Yes. I uh, am received I... Natalia is in Cancun and <laughs> she's there. She's here. We get to talk about her. This is so much uh oh no. I'm uh accidentally showing things. It's all uh <laughs> we're all I'm getting into it here. Um I love that James messaged in the private chat and went honk honk. <laughs> we all think Eric is creepy. Danger, danger. <laughs> uh, speaking of Natalia, we open the episode up with the Merrifields back in their favorite country, uh Mexico. Mm -hmm. Um their hunting ground, if you will. <laughs> right, right, right. The scuba bowl. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, and uh, Danielle is wearing a lovely flared pant leg suit. I don't know why I know. I don't usually notice the fashion, but I did notice that. Yeah, because I I think we are attuned to the Merrifield's fashion because Derek wear or Derek Garrick wears so many tank tops that it's like you just start to notice the outfit choices. Yeah. Do you think he just watched a lot of um, the OC? With that, um, what was it? What's the actor who was in that show? This uh, this is like my older millennial coming out with um, the bad boy from the wrong side of the tracks comes was in. Was his name Ryan or was his yeah. character's name Ryan? I think his character's name was Ryan and his name is like Benjamin something. Yeah, he's on Benjamin McKenzie. Does something that... like that. Anyways, yeah, he think... was like a bad boy and he always wore wife beaters. That it reminds yeah. me of Eric. Yeah, he's like from the wrong side of the tracks and. Garrick definitely is from the wrong side of the tracks, but like in a much different way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the really, yeah. really. Oh, he's more, side. he's more dark side of the moon though. Like he's not even. Yeah. He's up. He's track. from like the wrong side of the planet, or like the other right. side of the another planet. <laughs> yeah, he's he's in trouble. Well, I think that a lot of the um the decisions, the fashion decisions they make, are emblematic of what they think somebody will be attracted to. So Garrick is trying to wear the hot boy stuff where if he was out like a single young man would wear when he's trying to talk to a younger woman, you might wear like a tank top or, you know, something to show the guns off, you know, something to get a little chest in there, ad work. You want to do all that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, what time is it? You know, you want to do all that stuff. And whereas Danielle, I think she, like I can see the competitive nature in Danielle when she's what? dealing with these other women. So mm -hmm. she's always trying to put herself right there. So like even there was like I think there was like the first time we met the Merrifields, uh Roberta came out and she had this tank top like, ooh la la, it's so hot. She takes her uh cover off and then Danielle looked at it and then she jumps up and takes her cover off. Yes. And parents are like, what are we doing? <laughs> what are those? The funny part about that scene is that Danielle's parents were sitting right there witnessing right. this like disrobe off <laughs> right, exactly. and i'm, I'm gonna say it like you know I, I i think my daughter is pretty but i don't want to see a business no. you know what I, mean? yeah. like, I don't be all up in a business like whoa whoa <laughs> what are we doing like i understand you're older you know i mean guys are gonna be attracted to you da, 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 and yeah. you know maybe you want to show off the goods a little bit but please i don't want to see that <laughs> You're still my baby girl. You know? <laughs> yeah, no, no. Oh, speaking of uh, outfits and clothes and all that, did you all notice when Garrick was like, oh, thank God N Natalia changed out of those dirty rags she called clothes and into something that'll, you know, uh, really get my Holy Ghost boner going. <laughs> Her skater style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Her dusties. Yeah. Hey, can we talk for a minute? Because I agree with that. But I think that's in tandem to 
what is it with the Merrifields? Like the whole time Danielle is sitting there saying, I feel bad about what happened with Roberta and getting used. And this is why I'm hesitant about doing it because I feel like we were being used for money. And then the first thing you do on your first date is you fly this young lady and her mama to a different country. Then you rent a whole house, a whole house. And he, oh, the whole time you just throwing money around like you, you have it like that. Then you surprised that you get used for money. That they feel comfortable asking you for money. You have it, so why shouldn't she ask for it? I'm just like, it's just, I don't know. I know we're going to get into it, but that's just one of the things, like, even speaking about, like, the rags and how they see themselves, like, uh, socioeconomically between the people that they date. Like, it's just, you know, I don't know. It just bothers me. It bothers me. No, and I think, like, most of us are like, Great. Take all the money you can get off of these creepy people who are preying on these poor, like, Latino women, you know? Let other people tell you you're being taken advantage of. If you notice, hit, uh, Danielle's brother and sister-in-law weren't like, oh, no, you're getting bamboozled again. It was like, oh, no, Garrick's a freaking idiot, and he's back up to this whole thing again because – we're like kind of witnessing human trafficking a little bit. Like, I don't like this is it's like the, the brother and the sister-in-law, I don't think they're worried about Garrick depleting that. Well, maybe they should be about Garrick depleting the family funds for chasing women across the country, across, across the globe. But it, it it doesn't seem to be that they're worried about him being taken advantage of. It's him doing the taking advantage. Yeah. I mean, so who's going to think of these like poor women? Yes. <laughs> which, uh, which brings me to thank you for the super Kika Lika. Uh, Kika Lika <laughs> says, missed the last few streams. Glad to be back to talk about all these fools. But really, I cannot feel bad for Danielle anymore. She's an idiot. I think when you first watch, start watching the Merrifields, you're like, oh, wow, Garrick, he's a predator. But I think she's like kind of in on it now. And she's kind of um, asserting her dominance, too. She's really growing into that first wife role where mm. you can definitely tell where she's like manipulating things. Right, right. Well, to, to a couple points. First point, I see this. For these young ladies who are getting played out by the Merrifields, homeboy's going down there to try to mess around with these women. He's on a sexcation to try to go down and get the boom bop. When he goes away, <laughs> jump on the plane. That's fine. If you if he wants to get laid, you should get paid. So make sure that you get your money stacked up right because that's all that's happening in this situation. This is a very transactional relationship. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm done like pretending like this is a love interest and trying to find a deeper love and commitment because it's not he's trying to get his rocks off and he's using these women to do it that's the first thing second thing as far as them going like to these these other countries and trying to find these people they're making a, a mockery of the k-1 visa by doing yeah. this because you're not in like, like oh i'm gonna propose to her and as soon as i get the commitment you know what that means she's in my room you know what I mean? I'm gonna sing Danielle to go sleep in the boys' room because he's not because <laughs> that's all that's gonna happen. He's gonna kick Danielle out of the room that they have. And as far as her, me feeling bad for her, I don't feel bad for her at all because at this point, like it's one of those situations where you have a friend that keeps coming to you. Oh, he's doing this. He's doing that. He's doing this. You're like, well, why are you with him? You should break up with him. I should break up with him. I should break up with him. And they go right back after a while. What do you want me to say? You know what I mean? When you come and you start complaining about it, oh, okay. So do you want to get the bacon or you want the sausage? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't know what we're doing. What are we, what are we talking about? And this is the other thing I wanted to bring up with, especially with these two being that they are now on their second attempt at a relationship with a woman who speaks Portuguese. Their relationship with the, with Roberta was several years in the making Neither one of them speak speak a lick of Portuguese. And right. granted, I have heard that that is a very difficult language to learn. However, right. they have had years 
And you would think that Danielle especially would want to know or want to be able to converse with whoever Garrick is. Because Garrick clearly doesn't care about anything beyond sleeping with these women. So mm. my like hope that he would learn their native language is like, I just don't even have time to hope that. But you would think that Danielle might. And that is an additional reason why I don't feel bad for her. She yep. could do herself so many favors by downloading Duolingo or Babbel or something. She Maybe. also didn't seem to care at all about Roberta's mom going back to season three and four when yeah. Roberta, her, they were like, uh, Robert was like, my mom will be left alone. She's not in the greatest health. I didn't hear a peep from Danielle or obviously Garrick about caring about that. They were just like, evil woman. We gave yeah, her money and she yeah. won't come be. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. Her mom is on her deathbed and they won't get on the plane and come here and sleep with me. It's ridiculous. Like, <laughs> yep. And, and there is a point too, even with Danielle, at some point, like, because I remember when, uh, when Roberta first said that she was breaking up with Danielle. And Danielle sat there and cried and, and, and screaming, oh, I can't believe she did this to us. What about the princes? What about the kids? They did this to the kids. Here's my thing. If you recognize that your husband's a stone fool and he chases his willy around and making all the decisions, you have to make better decisions for your family and for yourself. Don't follow behind him while he's making bad decisions, especially when he's involving your kids, because he, like it or not, he essentially encouraged her to not only go meet with this woman and her mom, but he brought his kids to meet with a woman and her family who he has no idea who these people are. And you're bringing your kids along with you? Oh, and, and by the way, when we get down there, I'm going to propose to her. And it's going to be great, guys. You have to accept her as a mother. Like, what are we doing? You don't even, and like you guys are saying, you don't even speak the language. You haven't even had a full conversation with this woman beyond like talking on the phone. I love you. You love me. I love you. You look real pretty. Like that's all they, they're able to manage to say to one another. And it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So no sympathy from the OG three for Danielle. <laughs> Nope. Nope. Yeah. Uh, I'll throw a little bit of Danielle back at her. I don't understand. Like what you don't understand about your you are my sister. They're <laughs> 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 worst acting ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What a scene. Yeah. Um, let's switch gears a little bit. In the episode, we now go to see Danielle of the Davises, different Danielle. Uh, I kind of think of them as like young Danielle and older Danielle. Like Garrick's wife isn't old, but anyways. Yeah. Um, She's also not large. And yet here we are with all these monikers. For oh, we didn't talk <laughs> about that really quick. They, again, they're like obsessed with talking about. Um, tiny the, wife. Yeah. Tiny wife. The tiny mm -hmm. wife. We have to get all up into her looks. I mean, maybe producers are like forcing them, but still. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's creepy. Yeah. Um, but we hook back up with Danielle in her car, and mm -hmm. she's just left the Davis family. And <laughs> did y'all notice this when th we get up the producer's voice on camera? And the, the producer to me was like, "Oh yeah, I'm I'm gonna get some good television here." Uh, Danielle, say, uh, did you say goodbye to the little girl when you left to the little innocent child? <laughs> and she's like, right. "Oh." <laughs> Here's the thing with the Davises. There is love there. It's weird. I don't get it. But I, I get that there's love there. It's, mm. It kind of baffles me, to be honest. I mean, I think some people are torn. Like, is it love or has Danielle been taken in? It's. I know a lot of fans really love this family. And Danielle she's herself so says, I you know, I'm torn. That she's like what 23 or 24 or something like she's right she's very young younger very than young. roberta number two yeah and roberta number two is yeah. like 24 or something so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. i know that like i was an idiot in my early 20s and just <sighs> well i would say this i think that um <clears throat> when talking about danielle the one thing that i was 
Like I, I was celebrating the idea. First time in one of these ridiculous shows histories, somebody actually took a moment to step aside and consider and think about their future, what their future is going to look like if they pursue this avenue or this, this avenue. Like what, what happens down the line if I commit to this relationship and I go full bore, instead of me just closing my eyes and hoping for the best, I actually think about it and consider it. What is my family going to look like? And do I really want to participate in that? And I, and I respect the fact that she took the time and said, look, if I can't 100% commit to this, I need to step aside now, figure out what I want, and then decide whether this is something I want to participate in. And even with the uh, producers, like you were saying, Amanda, when you were saying that the producers were encouraging her to have this conversation, the truth of the matter is, to me, the conversation might have been a little too early because she, st she was still figuring things out for herself. And she needs to take that quiet moment to figure the things out for herself before she engages in the conflict with these women who are going to try to encourage her not to leave. So I totally understood when she said, yeah, I just packed up my stuff and I left. Did you talk to the other ladies? Hell no. I left in the, you know, when they went to work, I scooped my stuff and I had my trunk packed up and I, I got out of Dodge. I totally understood that because those women wouldn't have been sitting there trying to understand what she was talking about or her perspective or why she's afraid or what her concerns are. They were just sat there and saying, look, you agreed to it. This is our family. You need to accept it. You, you have to stay. You made promises. You made commitments. You have to do this. And they would have encouraged her and she would have been following her own heart. Mm -hmm. and, and so for that, I give, I'm, I'm all on. I was standing up applauding her. Like mm -hmm. run, run for the hills, girl, because this ain't for you. You know, I think um, Mace Chill brings up a really good point in the chat um, that Danielle, to me, just isn't ready to marry a wife. I think she was fine right. being in the relationship, but adding another and then having to marry them was too much for her. Because I like lest we forget that there's been a gap between when we last saw the Davises. <sighs> When they got married to Danielle last season, um, Jen was pregnant and now the baby's like a year old. So it's been uh, oh, like a year and a half since we've last seen him. So she's been in theory, I don't know, like fine this whole time. And now it's like they're talking about bringing someone in and we we know that uh, Nick likes to have them marry each other. Like maybe that's just getting to like real life for her. Maybe in her head, she's like, this is just like the thing I'm doing in my twenties. <laughs> like, right. yeah, but if yep. I have to like legally marry someone, like, oh, I don't know if yeah. I'm allowed to do that. This is her, right. you know, we all have those friends who like went off to a, you know, a commune or like yeah. volunteered for the Peace Corps. Or, like, you know, some, you know, went off and f found themselves in a journey and like, we all have to find ourselves in one way or another, but right. they really do. And like, I totally agree, Sarah, that this is kind of, this could be what was going on with Danielle. And then she went, uh, what? <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know if I'm, I'm willing to like sign on the dotted line for any of that. Right. Right. Yeah. And, it, and it's a weird and, it, and like even that's one of the dynamics that I was thinking about when I was saying that you have to step back and think about whether this is something you want to do because they have the uh, the part where they insist that you marry somebody. Why do I have to get married to anybody? Why do I have why do I have to commit to this person? Because technically the way that the Davis is date, he goes out and finds somebody that he wants to date. Then he brings them back to the family. So he goes out, scavenges around, figure out who he can get. He brings them back to the roost for the little hens to peck on. And then that's how they kind of decide what they want to do. And then they pretend like, okay, we have this whole conversation. Everybody is involved and everybody gets to decide on what we're going to do moving forward. And that's cute. But the reality of, of it is, is that you're going to ask Danielle to meet and marry a person that she doesn't necessarily have any connection to, mm -hmm. which is also farcical of the idea of matrimony. Because you have these ladies marrying each other and they are in they are in love with each other. They don't want to have a commitment to one another. They're just doing this so that they can, this is kind of their membership to the club. And that's ridiculous in and of itself. Yeah, you know. Uh, thank you so much, little bit, for the super chat. Uh, a little bit, little thank bit you says, a lot of bit. Yeah, that's a <laughs> lot of bits there. Thank you so much. Uh, so generous, and also welcome new member Heather Green. Oh, thank you, thank you. Okay. 
Um, should we uh, transition over to, I know Sarah was uh, pretty excited about this family before we got on the live. Should we talk about the Ryans? Uh, Becky and Justin, this is our first introduction to the Ryans, correct? Yes. If yes. anybody wanted to know what it would look like if one of Cody's kids grew up and lived polygamy, this would be like one. Of, <laughs> this would be his daughter. This would be McKelty if McKelty yeah. like, decided to live polygamy. Uh, I could see her in that role. Yeah. Um. Yeah, because Becky actually, you know, she grew up in a polygamous household, and I was like, oh, that's kind of nice. It's like. You know, it's like, it's nice to have a mixture. I don't want all people who have no idea what they're doing. You know, it's like, oh, I don't know. I just Googled it. And now I get to sleep with all these women. It's like nice to have people who are like, no, I was indoctrinated in and that's why I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. But Becky, it's so funny. And this is why it's like, she's McKelty to me because she tells us, yeah, like my moms didn't get along, but I know I could be different. Like I could do this differently. ma'am <laughs> i mean i want that confidence yeah <laughs> i can't know what she was doing <laughs> even though she actually lived it like and that's the weird part about it too because whether you like it or not whether she was good at it or not she was actually a polygamist you're kind of like just a neophyte wannabe polygamist you're married to one man for many years six kids no other sister wives and now you're stepping out onto that branch and you think you got it all figured out. That's a little weird to me. I don't know. How many people, like, like it's Becky, right? Yeah, Becky, do you mm -hmm. think, like, how influential have the Browns been on the polygamy community at, at large where we're getting people who maybe part of what they're considering is getting on the show? Because, like, she says, oh, I should have done it when I had younger kids. It's like, yeah, you should have. It would have made more sense back then to have mm -hmm. more help. So you see how sweet Janelle had it having Christine around. Yeah, like, yeah. she kind of had that deal. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I do you think the show is playing at all into some of these people deciding to suddenly late in life pursue polygamy? I'm sure. Yeah. Well, I, I think that the um, the acceptance, like the realization that there is an, a certain level of acceptance, like you're not gonna like people aren't gonna. You know, I'm a polygamist, and all of a sudden you have a lawn full of people standing out there with pitchforks and, and torches you know, to come and get you. I think the realization that that's not going to happen is open up the doors for a lot of people to come into the light and say that this is what our relationships are. and This is what I want to pursue. Um, but I think that I think that the way the Browns even did it in their polygamous relationship is very much can be laid over onto other people and other applied to other families. Like, I think there's a group of people who do just what the Browns did the same way. And so and I think that part of the reason why the Browns actually resonated so well, especially in polygamous groups, is because that they were a mirror of a lot of the polygamous groups that were in existence already, you know. Well, apparently they've had a relationship with a woman named Stephanie, um, mm -hmm. but she doesn't want to be shunned by her family like Garrick. Um, <laughs> seems it's a lot easier for these polygamists, these wannabe polygamists. It'd be a lot easier if they could find somebody in their community. What What's going on? Why are they all looking outside of their community? Well, like we've seen with, you know, Janelle and Cody, it, the family wreath, the family pretzel, if you will, it's, it's strong and you don't want to end up marrying your stepsister, <laughs> you know, like, right, right, so right. you gotta look outside and yeah. And you know, uh, Stephanie's anxiety is really cramping their style. <laughs> like she's just. I don't know, who is she to have an opinion? Worry who she so she is? <laughs> have her own hopes and dreams. Like what? What? You're here for my entertainment. Period. Point blank. The end. Like, yeah. I don't understand why you want things for yourself. It's crazy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so Becky and Justin go chick hunting at a bar, an empty right. bar is in the middle of the day. What are we doing here? What is happening? What's <laughs> with you know, the most interesting group of of gals there was a grandma 
a uh the the girl that they hit on and then another gal but it's like who brought their grandma to the bar right, right. <laughs> hey you know what mamas like to get down too sometimes so you know what right. that's gonna be me as a grandma it's like oh honey what are you getting into can i come just yeah. as you know i'm nosy <laughs> <laughs> Can I see it? Yeah. Deborah saying uh poly fishing in the chat. Yeah. Yep. Right. Well, because I think even with the uh the first part, the, the big question is if you are in a group, it would make more sense that you would find somebody within the group. So that way there's not a whole lot of explaining as to what it is you're doing. Like and, and I get the whole like I mean, I get it. You don't want to marry your cousin, but if <laughs> if that's the culture, that's the culture. Yeah. So uh, as time that <laughs> As opposed to you trying to convert people, like, like hey, you want to marry a cousin? It's great. Come on in the water. It's, it's warm and fabulous. <laughs> but but the the thing that bothered me with the uh, the whole bar scene, like first of all, I'm gonna I'm gonna come right out and say it. I think that that girl is a plank. Oh uh, yes, I have that in my notes too. Yeah, because yeah. because there there was no like chemistry or anything like. The yeah. conversation that they had wouldn't lead me to believe. Like if I was standing there and I was a, I forget his name, um, the dude, the dude, uh, the guy. If I was the guy and I was him and I was standing there having that conversation with somebody, I was like, "There's no way I'm asking her out because there's no way she's going <laughs> to accept this offer." The first thing, and the second thing is, is that in, at least in my mind, if you're going out, if you're single, I've been out the game for a minute, so I'm just recall. This is memory recall. If I'm a, if if I'm going out, it's better. It's just a better time meeting other people. If you go out to have fun, and then incidentally to you going out, you meet people, as opposed to you going out with the express purpose of I have to meet people. And if I meet people, I'm having a good time. And if I don't, I'm having a bad time because nobody wants to be a part of that fun. Nobody wants to get in part, invited to the party that looks miserable. But also, if you're like, a, these people are like these weird hybrids of like, they're like church, super churched up. And they're like, like, you don't go hunting for like to score like a lady in the middle of the afternoon. If you're going right. to, if you are going to be that like up front, you have to do it late at night when it's pitch black, you know, yeah. in a dance club. But they're, they don't want to do that, you know. And the creepies. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and even that, like, if you're going out, it would have made more sense to me. And I would I would feel better about it if you're going out like if I if I'm sitting there and I'm talking to my partner and we decided we're going to go out and pursue this and we're going to go hunting for ladies out at, out at the club or the local you know uh, the local Applebee's or whatever because that's where it looks like they were at like Applebee's or something <laughs> <laughs> scooping the ladies at the at the TGI Fridays but if, but if you're going to do that I would go out and I would. I, what I didn't see was them going out and enjoying each other's company. Yeah. Because if I'm bringing somebody else into the relationship, I should first be able to enjoy the company of the person I'm with. I should, I'm out with my best friend. We're going out, hanging out. Let's go out. We got a babysitter. We're going to be chilling. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have some drinks. We're going to get something to eat. And then maybe we're going to meet somebody else. And if we don't, we're just going to have a blast being out. That makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. And in, and like I said, with success, if I'm sitting there and I'm laughing with her, it would be so much easier for me to walk over across the bar and say, hey, would you like to come and join the party? As opposed to coming and joining a, a thing that looked like you talking to your sister and I find out that's actually your wife. Like, what the hell are we going? Like, you guys here for a funeral? Like, somebody passed and you guys just sitting there trying to console yourself with booze and now you're trying to pick people up? What's going on? Like, it's just weird to me. <laughs> yeah, I was a bartender at Applebee's. If I saw a couple a married couple and a camera crew fishing for sister wives in the middle of my afternoon shift i would be like okay this is awesome i'm entertained <laughs> <laughs> um okay so we briefly leave the ryan's and we actually meet up with shane and his bestie somebody in the chat earlier was like you know there's it seems like there's three people in this scene and the third is some very vivacious yeah cleavage yes. <laughs> it was it was noticeable His um, friend, yeah, the girl, the girl, girl came out to play this was, this was yeah. rachel was her name is that did i get that right in my notes i think so i think so i'm so bad with people's names i know they flash the little titles like so quickly sometimes yeah. 
Right. Um, I was a little disappointed Rachel wasn't like, bruh, it sounds like your wife just like wants a taste of the rainbow. What are you doing? Right. <laughs> like right. she just kind of sat there and like, you know, I don't know. What did you think of this? I like that this guy meets his wife competitive axe throwing and he meets this friend competitive beer ponging which i didn't even know you could do that semi-professionally or whatever like competitively <laughs> like me neither where do you do that <laughs> dive bars yeah. i've heard of dive bars that's where you would go do that <laughs> They usually have the meth deal on the corner. Like, I don't know. Crazy. Maybe they have tournaments inside frat houses. I don't know. Right. Yeah, I mean, like, isn't all beer pong a competition? <laughs> like, right, right. Well, actually, when I heard that, I was like, I was waiting for him to bring in a friend. This is my friend from the competitive jumping jacks competition that I was involved with. It is my friend from Hopscotch. <laughs> yeah, I can't Google wait sport. to meet Google. more friends. Like, what else do right. you do? <laughs> this dude has a lot of hobbies. Let's just go right out and say it. Hey, <laughs> you know what? Game. Good for Shane. He's putting himself out there, you know? Right, right. Maybe he's, he's just like always involved. on meetup and he's like always seeing meetups and he's like, I'm going to go to all of these and be super sexy. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Well, because apparently his wife is busy. So his wife, since his wife ain't home, he <laughs> might as well go make friends in other places. Wait, you, you crack know. the code, James. His wife is like out exploring her sexuality, and Shane's like, "Well, I guess I'll get another hobby. <laughs> I'll join a pool <laughs> league. I'll become a and competitive I'll about uh, <laughs> jigsaw puzzler or something." Yeah. <laughs> right, he's right. he's like playing chess with old men in the park. He's like doing everything. <laughs> his wife's just like making out with chicks. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it's the, a quick scene. I, oh, go ahead, James. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say the one thing that I, I, uh, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way about the conversation that he was having with this young lady by the pool was the, um, when she had insisted that Grace, like, oh, well, Grace has to understand and respect you as the partner because you're 50%. But here's the thing unless you're out hunting, unless Ashley, the wife, is out hunting for a booty call, that young lady, whoever she picks is also going to be her partner. And at least that's how it was sold or advertised to us. So she's an equal partner in this relationship as well. There is no duty and bowing and curtsy. And when you come in the room, because you're the almighty husband and he, had, and that's part of the thing. Like, I don't think that he really understands what he's involved in. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I just don't, I, I'm not getting that feeling. Like if she's attracted, like, Oh, okay. We'll talk, we'll talk about. I'm sure we'll talk about that in a minute. But if he, if she's really attracted to somebody, I don't think he has as much say in who she dates as he thinks he does. I mean, clearly, no. Later on, they ha they show the couple in their bedroom, and she's like, "Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm not going to continue forward with Grace." I'm like, "Pretty right. sure? Shouldn't you be pretty certain?" <laughs> And then, it, and it was almost like his grace is so, she's that person that always has to have the last word. So it was kind of like, you know, I, in my opinion, Ashley sent her a very like therapisty type breakup, uh, like very like professional. And then mm -hmm. Grace was like, oh yeah, you know what? Like I actually, well, she didn't say this, but it was almost like, I'm so glad you said that. Cause I like totally felt that first, you know, like. I was totally over this first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I get that though, because nobody want to be the one to get broke up with. <laughs> like, I'm breaking up with you. I'm double. You could have a ring in your pocket. Like, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> this you ain't working out. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but even um, that, like, I, I went a yeah, little inside baseball. My, my suspicion, and I, and I guess I, I have the uh, benefit of foreknowledge in seeing some of the previews. I think that the girl that we see her meeting with, who she, like, if you look at the previews, she's totally into this, this new one, this next one that she's going to be talking She's totally into her. I'm like, this was the one. But I think she was already in the mix. Like, I think she was already kind of in the pot when she was talking to Grace, like, eh, I don't know if I really want to continue with Grace because I'm not really feeling it. You went on six dates with this woman. If this was somebody that you were really attracted to, then I think things would have moved along a lot faster in those six dates. Like you wouldn't still be henpecking on the sixth date. You know what I mean? You know, okay, well, I'll see you later. Like kissing like she's your aunt. 
You know what I mean? The the, the, the honest. But are also not addressing the fact that like Ashley is six months pregnant, and like right. I mean, do you? But like, there is literally nothing I would have wanted to do less than like go out on a. I mean, like date my husband fine like i you know whatever but like a first date a second date six months pregnant and she's getting them who is going out i mean i there is a glow a beautiful glow to pregnant ladies but i'm just thinking of my my, the single version of myself i would have been like uh (laughs) this goes somewhere you're now you're you're going to be a parent if this goes somewhere, if you're dating someone who's pregnant, right? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you ready to be a mommy? <laughs> oh, I just thought of something. Uh, question. Mm-hmm. If she starts dating somebody, and I think she's about, uh, she says she's six months, so she has three months. So you have three months to get to know this person, invite them into your family, become part of the, the unit. Does the girlfriend get to come into the room while she's having the baby? And will Shane be okay with that? Because now, like, if we're going to keep it all the way stacked, and she's part of the family, she has every right to be there in the room with her significant other, because even though Shane is the husband, he's sharing his significant other with this other woman who is the significant other as well. So she would technically have every right to be in the room holding a hand, just like you are. Get us some ice chip, Shane. Yeah, it <laughs> I don't presents... know what she's going through. I understand what's happening. You don't know. Yeah, I don't know how that would work. Dear God, yeah. Too, too many, too many complications for me. Um, welcome, Lorraine. Uh, oh, I'm gonna uh, Moat. Uh, thank you for being a member. I of either James or Sarah's channel. I can't tell which. <laughs> and then, okay. uh, thank you for the super gossip, rumor, and innuendo. Ooh. Did you notice the command hook on their headboard? Absolutely, freaking lutely. I was like, what is going on? Is that a divide? And like he's not able, allowed to go past where the hook is because it was right between their heads. Does she pull like a, a cord so it's like a fence at night? Like just- <laughs> well, I, I think that's for a couple of strains. Like when they want to take a little walk on the wild side, like I think there's some, uh, there's, there's, there's probably a tie, tie down in there somewhere. Oh, okay. I was like, what dirty can that's you do I'm with saying. a command hook? That It's so <laughs> yeah. short. What? Okay, but okay, you're tying. Tie okay. Well, you know, because for uh She's tired it out, and not that I'm all into it, but I, I'm just using my imagination for those <laughs> keeping track. Mm-hmm. Um, I would imagine that, like, for uh, safety, like, you know, you have safe words. I can imagine that somebody would have that so you can unhook yourself if you, you know, things are going on, like, oh, I'm restrained. But if it gets too crazy, like, oh, off the hook we go, and I'm out. Just you know, in case I the house that. catches fire and she's like a every man for <laughs> themselves situation and then you're stuck tied up and Oh Shane's totally yeah, running out. <laughs> if the uh, house catch on fire in the middle of the thing and she's tied yeah. down, yeah, Shane's leaving her. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing about Shane to make me think he's gonna stay there and try to fight fires. I don't know. <laughs> he could be spending his off time taking like uh, firefighting classes as a hobby. He's a competitive <laughs> amateur firefighter. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> uh, okay, we go back to Mexico and we meet George Mexican George Clooney. Their I've guide. always wondered what he looks like. Yeah, right. I, I liked. Uh, I thought he was a handsome fella. He was. Um, Garrick's like ooh la la. We already went over that. Gross. In front of your That's kids. No, is it a cenote? That looked really cool. Yeah, what was it? They're like in these caves. It was like a cave. Yeah, and they're swimming in this cool looking water. Yeah. I mean, that mm-hmm. looked awesome. Yeah. yeah. But the bats yeah, but probably really would freak me out too. I wonder if it was really loud. If like because the bats were probably like, "Hey, you guys are coming all up into our domain. Like, what are you doing?" I was just napping, and now I'm all awake because there's camera equipment in here. But uh, it was really cool. Yeah, yeah. bats are yeah, scary. I I get. I can see. Like, I'm, I probably would have been a dumbass if I got in the water, but. So I'm actually going to be uh, two sides of this a little bit. But I can see where the young lady had some hesitance about getting in the water. Because you start seeing bats, you're like, I don't like this. It's too much nature happening too close to my situation. One, two, if you're in a cave with bats on the ceiling, 
that means that that water has back guano in it. You know what I mean? Like you, you're literally swimming in bat. <laughs> oh yeah, bat poo poo. You know. Yeah, so she was probably like, ah, no. <laughs> <laughs> and and Gary said, just say Garrett jumps in with his mouth wide open. Ah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would have probably gotten in. I love water, and my dog looks like a bat, and so I oh. am partial to uh, bats. Been fine with it. <laughs> yeah. The one thing I didn't like was uh, when, especially with the language barrier, but when she said, when the young lady said, I don't want to get into it, and, and for me, that's kind of a, a point, too. When she said, this is something I don't want to do. I don't care whether I agreed to do it. I told you this is something I want. My dream is always to go to the cave and swim with the bats. And she gets there and all of a sudden she says, no, I got the blues. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's she, cool. I don't even know I how know, people do that, but they I, always do it to James. Awesome. And I'm like, yes. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. I love it. But uh, when she said no, that should have been it. No is no, folks. If she says this is something I don't want to do, that, you know, you can try to maybe push a little bit. Come on, and you go have fun. Come on. But if she says, no, I absolutely don't want to do this, stop trying to encourage her and then saying that, oh, well, we didn't have as much fun as we should have had because she didn't do what we wanted her to do. Like trying to, you know, exert that control and that power over her. She has every right to say, look, I don't feel comfortable. I, You know, I, I was going to come down, get in the water, but I can't see the bottom. And I don't swim in any wild nature thing, but I can't see the ocean or I can't see the bottom of anything. You know, which... You know, some people have that fear. So mm -hmm. I respect her for that. And I, I also respect the fact that she's still on her note, yeah. which mm -hmm. is going to be problematic later, I think, for Danielle. Yeah, Danielle was such a bee about things. She was like, Natalia's ruining my good time. Like, <laughs> you have both of your kids here, which is like questionable parenting, but yeah. okay. You, you're on a family vacation. Like, if she just wants to sit out, okay. Like, yeah, it's fine. It yeah. doesn't have to ruin your good time. Like, and now it's like right. super uncomfortable because now you've like harped on it for a whole bunch of time. Yeah, I'm to press her to do understand. It. So you're you're yeah. yelling at her in a foreign language and it's like, I don't know what to do. Yeah, all she yeah, knows is the vibes are bad. Yeah. Get in the way. It's great. Gestures like, come on. That's not going to make it better. It's like speaking louder to somebody who doesn't speak English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, welcome, fair child. Uh, sorry, James. What were you saying there? No, go ahead. Oh, I was just welcoming fair child to uh, I think Sarah, uh, and then thank you, Deborah, for gifting a membership. Um, thank you for the super fog flower. Fog flower asks, <laughs> how strong do y'all think uh, those command hooks are? We're back to the command oh, hooks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're weak as hell. You totally pulling them out the bed. <laughs> yeah, and you really have to scrub and make sure it's a clean surface or the, the stick right, doesn't right. stick as well. Um, Kika Lika, thank you for another super. Do you think Prophet G. Google translates his translation of the Bible to these women? Oh, <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Prophet G, yeah, right. According to the word, I could see Natalia like flipping through the Bible, going like, "Ah, uh, I, uh, I must not have gotten that version because I don't see here where it says the Holy Spirit's sperm." I don't know. Right, right. Yeah, brainwash you, which is actually pretty arrogant. Like, because if you really think about what he's saying, he's yeah. saying that the vitamin D is strong enough to brainwash you. Like he said, when he put it on you, it's going to change your whole mindset. Like, which is pretty. Like, that's pretty braggadocious for anybody. Mm -hmm. like, I'm, girl, I'm gonna change your whole world. You come to my house, I'm, I'm gonna change the whole reality and how you see the rest of the world. One night with me, like that's insane, especially for somebody like that. Mm -hmm. And isn't it funny too? Like, so Danielle and Garrick have been married for a while. They they got married as I don't know if they were teenagers, but they were very very young. Uh, and, in I think they were in college. Right. Yeah, and I see similarities with um Becky and Mr. Justin. Becky, whatever his name is. <laughs> I think it's Justin. <laughs> Justin. <laughs> um, and they've been I mean 16. She was 16 when they got married. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like, is this something that happens when you get married really young? Like you just 
hit that like 25 year itch. And then you're like, Hmm, don't want to stay married. Don't want to get divorced by polygamy. I mean, this, these like late in life polygamists, like there's definitely some midlife crises going on here. Uh, uh, well, a hundred percent for Garrick, a hundred percent. Right. Well, he's in it for the ladies. Like it's not, it has nothing to do with, I don't think the uh, commitment, but I will say this. Like, I think that with Danielle being as pushy as she's being, like even trying to assert the uh, first wife position. And even later she comments that, well, I don't necessarily feel as close to uh, her as I did to Roberta at this time or at this stage in our relationship. I felt like me and Roberta had more, like she was more willing to have fun and do things and basically do what she wants. I think that Danielle is ignoring or at least missing one very important factor. And the factor is when you met Roberta, you were Garrick's wife. You were his wife. So she had to win you over just as much as she had to win Garrick over in order for her to exist in that space. This new young lady, because you gave, you blessed Garrick with the divorce, she doesn't have to play the game with you. She doesn't have to like you and you have to like her and be willing to sacrifice her for her, et cetera, et cetera. She only has to impress the hell out of Garrick. And let's be honest, if homegirl gets in the boudoir and she throw her leg up on Garrick just right, <laughs> Danielle is good, good gone. Okay. Uh, good, I don't good think gone. I too much for, for, for Miss Danielle. She can leave. And he'll come right over there like you were the person who's got to move out. Sorry, bye. And close the door. <laughs> but this is Y'all how just sit here in Cancun. This is how masterful Danielle is because she made a mistake with Roberta when, you know, Garrick and Roberta had that quickie and, and she was, you know, not there for that and she it happened so quickly under her watch but now she's making natalia shack up with her mom so that there's no chance for hanky panky right eric can't be sneaking into natalia's room for a quickie yeah i was gonna mm -hmm. ask so you think that came from danielle oh yeah not Roberta. Yeah. Or sorry. See, I'm just like Danielle. I'm saying Roberta too. I, I wasn't even doing my Roberta number two joke. Um, <laughs> Natalia wasn't the one who was like afraid well, of the. I mean, she's probably so grateful that Danielle <laughs> imposed that rule. But I think that Danielle decided like, we're bringing our boys. We like, you are not, like, I mean, this is already yeah. such like a years down the road something that her boys are going to relive in therapy but like let's try to mitigate the trauma like no hanky panky <laughs> okay well, but know, until I... oh go ahead james no no uh i i didn't really consider that but i will say this it is it is uh interesting that she the house was loaded up like they loaded up all the rooms so there's really no space where they could go and, and sneak off to be by themselves because Garrick and and, uh, and Danielle are sleeping in the same room, and then right next to them, you have the mom and and uh, the young lady sleeping in the, oh, yeah. uh, Natalia sleeping in the same room. So, and then of course the boys are probably in their own room. So everything is loaded up, and unless they down there in the washroom or in the uh, laundromat or whatever, the laundry room, trying to make the machines rot, like it's just going to be a weird place. Mm -hmm. So I can see that. <laughs> Don in the chat says if Garrick wants to bail and leave with Roberta the sequel I like that one uh Danielle will wind up sleeping in a barn yeah, yeah I mean yeah. I I see your point Sarah I, Danielle is definitely being smarter this time around but at the same time because at first I was like oh, oh, oh no hanky panky okay okay he's you know he's gotten under control but then it's like oh until he proposes and what is his criteria for proposing Her, uh, so he thinks she'll say yes the bar is low. She, the bar is low. She look good in the phone. She's That's alive. The She's not a robot when we meet her, and I'm going to propose. Right, right. Yeah, she showed up. <laughs> so that was his green light to propose. Yeah. So right. I'm thinking he will have. I mean, like, if they're going to do a five minute quickie when they, you know, with Roberta, when they think Danielle might be coming back. He will find a place. They'll go to the jacuzzi or the pole. They'll go to the like. Garrick's going to get off. I mean, not to be crude, right. but he's going right. to. No, I mean, it's like, I mean, even to that respect, this is the equivalent of trying to marshal somebody, a spouse or a significant other who you think is cheating on you. 
you're wasting your time. If you think that you're going to be able to prevent somebody from cheating on you, if you're around enough, you call them enough, and, and you pop up at their house, it doesn't matter. Because as long as you have two willing adults who are willing to do this, they will find a place and they will make the time to go get together. So there's no stopping it if, it, if it's coming down the line. And then even with, like, with, with regard to something Sarah said, if you have these young men, like, because I'm looking at these guys as young men, you have these young men who are about the age when they start, you know, hair starts growing in funny places, they start noticing girls, they're at that age. And then you have this young lady showing up, you know, your daddy's new girlfriend showing up and she's got a behind hanging out, you know, taking warm showers under the, you know, th this is like, these kids are going bananas. These <laughs> kids are going bananas. Like, like, you can't tell me. Like, okay, dad's doing it, you know what I mean? So, yeah, and so when they get in the hugs and stuff, watch them little boys they give this lady a hug. Oh, we miss you so much. It just matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it also worries me that Garrick seems to think that the thing that's holding him back is him proposing. So, like, if he proposes... Does that mean it's an automatic yes to Pound Town from Natalia? Like, are I'm I'm a little concerned about like consent and all that. Like, because you guys don't even speak the same language. I, I like I'm worried about how like actually enthused she is for Garrick to be giving her the Holy Spirit. Right. Yeah, we get like one confessional, I think, where she's kind of describing like she's uh, she's into him, if I'm not wrong. Do, did you two remember watching that? <clears throat> yeah, she said she was attracted to him. She okay. thought he was very attractive. He works out. He has a good body, such as she has a connection with him and she thinks she's in love with him. But she also right. says that she's not sure about Danielle. She has a long way to go with Danielle. So, I mean, that's kind of built into the sauce. But I do like I'm a big proponent for like you can do what you want. Like, I, I'm, you know, I'm go crazy, get, get a little test of strain, go, go step on the wild side, do whatever you want. But everybody involved in a relationship should have a f complete understanding of what it is you're doing. And I think that that kind of goes to, or at least harkens to what Sarah, you guys were saying about them not having the communications to where they can actually communicate with each other as to what the parameters of the relationship are, what what's actually going on. Like they give each other like these when they're doing that whole like text message translation, Prophet G and uh, Google Translator, they doing that. All they're doing is I love you so much. You're so beautiful and a lot of flowery words, but they're not getting to the nitty gritty of what the relationship actually is and what it's going to look like. And that's problematic, especially when you're dealing with somebody. And I'm speaking as an older guy and as an older guy, if I'm talking to a woman who's 25, 26 years old. My understanding of relationships may be completely different than her understanding of relationships. You know what I mean? My experience with relationships will be complete. We're worlds apart. He's a father of two boys who are almost adults. And then she's just coming into her own. They're just in two different places in life. So for them, you know, I love you so much. You're the best thing that ever happened to me. I'm Prince Charming. You're Cinderella. Like, what the hell is that? So I don't think that they really have, like, when we speak about consent, what is she consenting to? She can consent to the action but she can't necessarily consent to the relationship. And he's saying that there's no action without there being a relationship, but how can she consent to something she doesn't know nothing about? Because you can't communicate that to her. Good point. Yeah, piggybacking off of that, Kika Lika, thank you again for another super, uh, says, nobody is naive to the fact that whatever woman ends up with the Merrifields will be abused by both of them, right? There is a reason they want somebody they can financially and geographically control. I mean... I, I think everybody is saying some stuff that it's like we've had a lot of serious things go on in like the polygamy reality TV world lately. And I don't know. I think it's a conversation. It like what's where's the line? And, you know, Sarah was mentioning like trafficking. We've already discussed their, you know, K-1 visa fraud. Um, mm. You know, James, you're talking about how you know, she can't even understand what she's getting into. Yeah, We've been yeah. referring to them as predators, the whole up, you know, the whole mm -hmm. video. Um, you know, this is, this could be kind of serious. This, this is like getting grosser and grosser. Right. right. Yeah. And like, I think also there's this like assumption that 
people just want to come to America. Mm. And that's something like with 90 Day Fiance, you, you see all the time these people just assume that the the foreign fiance is running some sort of scam to try to come to America. If if it's like clearly not a love, love match, right? With Roberta, I don't think she necessarily wanted to come to America. I think that she like was very close to her mom. Um, we see like on the new season um, of 90 Day Fiance, Happily Ever After with uh, Mahmoud, like he had a terrible time leaving his family. And then there, there's like a whole controversy about him. But it's like people don't necessarily like want to come to America. Right, right. right. Yeah. No, well, and I'm, I will. Oh, go ahead, James. No. I was just going to say, I will say that uh, on the upside, if Garrett does put an application for the K-1 visa for this young lady, uh, Natalia, then on the upside, he is no longer, he'll be barred from applying for a K-1 visa in the future. That's the only real upside. The downside is, is that he probably will convince Danielle to start applying and he'll have kind of a Davidson situation going on. Mm -hmm. Because you're only allowed two applications for a K-1 visa. So I do. And that's whether they're approved or not. Yeah. You know, so I, if you put an application that gets rejected or they turn it down, that's mm -hmm. one. Yeah. And this will be a second. I do worry with shows like 90 Day Fiance. And then earlier in Seeking Sister Wives, Seeking Sister Wife, we saw with the Snowdens, uh, Dimitri married Crystalline that they brought. Mm -hmm. Well, now he was never legally married to um, Ashley. So it's a little bit of a different situation, but like with the Merrifields, we see them committing fraud on the right. show when they go and get the divorce and the judge asks them, is your marriage irrevocably broken? And Danielle says, yes, like fraud, that is fraud. <laughs> um, right, right. And it's like, is this going to make it harder for like real couples to, to, utilize this process to bring someone they love over to the United States. Th I think right. that is like a concern. Yeah. It's not yeah. easy, especially post COVID. And like, yeah. I I imagine being somebody who is like your, your heart is breaking because you can't get your actual partner that you are actually, you're both committed to each other over. And you're just like, I, I mean, we've all, well, I, a lot of us have, I've been in a long distance relationship. I, I had to do long distance with my wife before we got married and I can't imagine being in separate countries. And like, then they're seeing these people who are just like playing, you know, uh, just pick the, you know, yeah. harm the Brazilian. I can't think of anything. It's not even funny. It's terrible. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's a good point. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, I think that there's also a complication because, as you said, when you have these type of examples, like I've, I've always taken the position, like I, I had the whole thing where I was calling Sister Wives a polygamy propaganda program. Mm -hmm. I think that 90 Day Fiance, even though it was pushed out as a positive, net positive for these types of relationships, ultimately I've always taken a position that I don't think that the producers or people behind the show actually encourage uh, this type of migration because they put it in such a trivial uh, light as far as the application process. Mm -hmm. Like these people barely know each other and they're using the 90 days to get to know one, one another, and figure out whether they actually want to be married. That's not what the 90 days is for. The 90 days is given to you. They give you three months because they assume that you've been in a long-term relationship with this person and you already know you want to get married. Mm -hmm. They're just giving you three months so that that way they don't have to get off the plane and then run down to the chapel to, to do vows before they get kicked out of the country. That's why they give you three months. Mm -hmm. That's it. And so when you have like people like this, it's extremely damaging to um, people who want to want to come into the country. But I will also say that by Danielle doing this, there is a term in uh, legal in in, uh, in the legal world, uh, clean hands. So in this particular instance. If, the, if Garrett decides that he wants to put Danielle out, and I'm assuming he has the property and things and things in his name, assets in his name, if he wants to kick Danielle out, she set herself up because there's no way she can go back and, and, and sue him for anything because she doesn't have clean hands. Because like you said, Sarah, 
she already participated in fraud. You, you, you created the situation by participating in the fraud, which allowed the situation to happen. And now that he wants to kick you and the boys out because he got the good good from uh, Miss Natalia, now all of a sudden <laughs> you want to complain about this isn't right. I've been with him for X amount of years. I help him build his business and I should get a part of it. The court's not going to hear your case. You know, so that's just something else to consider. But I do agree that it's uh, it's very damaging to K one business. Yeah. Um, do you? Let's go back to at the, towards the end of the episode. We get back with it's it's a little bit more lighter of a scene. We're back in the chick hunting zone with Justin and Becky, and we're gonna kind of wrap up this scene of them talking to Desiree. Um, this was hilarious, I thought. There's so many funny parts to this scene from Justin being like, oh, that, no, that chick's too hot for us to um, <laughs> him like literally running away to go get his business cards. James and I were laughing about that before the stream yeah. started. Like, <laughs> what are you all, your all thoughts on the like shenanigans of this couple? Could this lady be stephanie the the gal whose face was blurred out and that's why they were blurring her face because this girl is actually a plant <laughs> we right, were talking right. about that like this seemed like a farce <laughs> right right who would not say what on earth are you talking about if someone approached you with what that lady was selling at a bar just you utter to, what? <laughs> that's what well, that's what's crazy is initially she gives the reaction we all think she's gonna give, and then later towards the end, she's like, I am free tomorrow night. So I'm like, Oh yeah, plant, plant, production plant. Right. And I love your theory about this being Stephanie. That would be hilarious. <laughs> well, I, I would say this. No, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, I've you know, girls gotta eat a date or two in my day, you know, where you just like, you know, Hey, why not? Girls got to eat. But, um, if it was the wife of the guy asking if I want, I would be like, I, I don't know. Like I could always go to McDonald's. <laughs> right, right. That wouldn't win you over asking no, if I'm you've really worked out. Sounds hey, have you worked out have recently? You, you want to go out with me? Yeah. <laughs> No. No. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> For those who don't know, like even a uh, do you work out? That's a that's a a stupid, clever way of saying you have a nice body. <laughs> oh, do you work out? Oh. You have a nice body. This is you why know, we need like you, James. You're you're being our <laughs> translator, our man translator. Uh right. Kika Lika says, I would stiff arm any woman at the bar who word vomited at me some BS about dating her husband. Girl, you're harsh and my mellow. Thanks for the super. Like, I'm trying to get drunk with my grandma. Like, move along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially if you have a high tolerance. You're roaring in my buzz, and I already put down like 50 bucks on that, so we need to back up. You know? Oh, yeah. Slow Excuse this me. Down. I'm trying to enjoy my $15 Bahama Mama. <laughs> Can you, like, get right. out of my space? <laughs> You know, here I am rocking Alabama slammers and somebody come up and ask me some foolish shit. Like, nobody's playing that game. They but I will say this. this at 2 p.m. because clearly someone's on parole in this group and they had to, like, <laughs> be home by a curfew. So... <laughs> yeah, right. Like, if I get my ankle monitor off, I would gladly join you for cocktails tomorrow. <laughs> and, and I will say this. As a parent, there's not a whole lot, especially if you have young kids, there's not a whole lot of stuff that you would like, I'm not wasting babysitters, you know, because yes. there's a difference between being a single person with no responsibility and being a parent who has to get, you know, arrange uh, people to watch or supervise your children. I'm not wasting no babysitters on the bull stuff. Like, I, I'm gonna go out with the guy who can barely make a sentence and is staring <laughs> at the wall. Like, I'm going out with you for what? You can't even have a conversation with me now. Why am I gonna make cut out time and ruin a babysitter opportunity? So I can sit in a, a restaurant with you and you can't even have a conversation with me now. What's the point? What are we going to do this again? You, I'm talking to a weirdo chick about, oh, have you ever dated to a body? Blah, blah, blah. And he, he's just staring at the wall like he, he's looking at the menu or trying to read the bottles. Like, come on. <laughs> uh, James, you had some thoughts on this earlier. What He exit to get his polygamous business card? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. 
Do you Dude, all think he was I just think? scared and he needed to like go outside and be like, come on, Justin, you could do this, Justin. You're a polygamist, yeah. Justin. You got this. You got it. You're a polygamist, Justin. <laughs> you're a handsome man and you're worth it. You're worth it, bro. Like, <laughs> get your like, butt in there and talk to this woman. He's like, doing like, the cool runnings thing to himself. I see pride, power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, and again, I must say that I've been out the game for a minute. So correct me if I'm wrong. It's just weird to me that you would go get a business card. Like, and I've had business cards before. And, you know, for, you know, good business cards. You're like, okay, wow, this is impressive. But at the same time, one, you don't want to put yourself out like this is the sum of who I am. Two, I would recommend you don't give somebody a business card because you're giving them the access to you at your job. Keep those two things separate. You're giving a stranger access to your job, especially if you're stepping out with your wife doing some polygamy stuff. Like, keep the freak stuff to yourself. Keep the freak stuff in the bedroom quiet, hush, hush, quiet to the QT, and, and keep your work stuff separate. Because this, you know, you don't want nobody calling up, hello, can, hello, uh, bro. <laughs> Swankum, Jankum, and Bankum. Hello, can I speak to freak man uh, Charlie? Uh, I <laughs> met him at the bar yesterday. <laughs> What was I mean, that? Schwankum, Bankum, and Frankum? <laughs> Twinkum, Bankum, and Spankum. You know what I mean? Spankum. Oh, James, you are too much. I'm loving this. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess we're going to probably see uh, De Desiree again um, if she said yes, right? And slash if this is actually Stephanie. I have so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> um, I always wonder how many people who watch these shows are poly. Uh, yeah. AS says, as a non-monogamous person, it is unbelievably cringy watching these folks try to date. They are making every mistake possible. Do they not have the internet to connect with like many people? Yeah, there's poly apps and websites you can go to, but I guess that's not as fun television. Like when I right. became a parent, like I didn't know anything about parenting. So I like read, I join groups and blah, 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 like how to gentle parents. It's like, is there a like how to gentle polygamy or something like how, how to not, how to not. <laughs> right. I mean, well, yeah, I, there's a lot of public families who can write how to have an unsuccessful polygamist family. It's hysterical to me you that be like us. admitting <laughs> that she comes from a very dysfunctional polygamist family. I mean, maybe not dysfunctional, but clearly her moms weren't like besties. So what was the like? What was that like that you thought, let me do that to my kids? Right. You know who it reminds me of is it reminds me of Christine. Um, when Christine was so nonchalant when they when her and Janelle go visit um her brother, her half brothers, uh -huh. and mm -hmm. she's like, Oh, the brothers are like, um, it was miserable. They were it was a war zone, they were fighting with each other. Christine's like, Oh, I was having a party, I couldn't wait to grow up and be a polygamist. Good point. Good point. Cause I was like. Becky, my girl, like, what? Right. <laughs> well, because I think also there's a, uh, we can't, we can't dismiss the, the reality that for a lot of the polygamists, there is a source of indoctrination for the young ladies, stronger indoctrination for the young ladies where they're pushing them into polygamy because part of, you know, you know, part of what makes the world go around is the fact that they they use the young ladies to make the older guys happy. So they're not going to push the younger guys into trying to date and suck up a lot of the resources, which is the younger girls. So yeah. I think that that's part of it. But uh, even getting back to something that AS has said, um, being a non-monogamous person, if you want to be a part of a group, typically you try to hang out with like-minded people of the same group. You don't have to date them, but I would assume that you, if you want to fix cars or be a guy that deals with the cars, classic cars, you find a classic car group and you learn how to do the, you learn the lingo, you learn the cool sweaters and jackets to wear, you know, get the patches, you know, like, like, same, same. If you're interested in doing um, like uh, polyamorous, polygamous, you know, polygyny or whatever the case may be, just non-monogamy, if you're interested in that, you try to find like-minded people that you can hang around with, that you can communicate with so that you can be successful at it. That's also part of the indoctrination of some of the polygamous groups, is that they try to have like-minded people. So I, I, I don't, I think that the reason why this young lady thinks that she's going to be more successful is because she thinks that because she's more outgoing, she's going to be able to 
meet these ladies, develop a friendship with them because she's so outgoing. And that's going to bridge the gap and make the relationships better. But I don't know how well that's going to go. Because if you don't have the fundamental, like day to day, small detail on how to do it, I think it'll, it might not turn out like you plan. Yeah. And by the way, that advice is so true. Like I have a lot of people who, cause I'm, you know, out like pretty public, they'll be like, how do I meet queer women? You know, it's like, go to where they are, <laughs> you know, take a, take a women's studies class, uh, you know, join a, you know, uh, your local softball intramural league for women, you know, right. that's how I met my husband, uh, Tinder. Like I was interested in dating. He was interested yep. in dating and we met right. on a platform where it was people that were interested in dating. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Who would have thought? And I think that, that I think what you guys are saying is is uh, so valuable because why would you not if you're into especially something that's a little more uh eccentric, you know, because not everybody is is a kid. Like there's some people you walk up to and that very conversation, hey, how would you like to meet my husband? Or are you guys open to this? That could downright turn into an altercation. Like, people get cussed out. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. I spent my early childhood in Alabama. You do that in the wrong bar in the deep south, uh, you might lose a limb. Okay. Yeah, something is happening. Yeah, there's going to be some furniture moving around. The cops are getting called. The people getting taped off. There's going to be chalk on the floor. Like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, you, you got to be careful. So, I think that, again, you, you go to people who are open to that concept instead of, and this is one of the things that was kind of weird to me, too. Instead of you trying to indoctrinate people into your group or into your belief system, or find people who are like-minded instead yeah. of trying to convert people. I'm going to find somebody who has always been a monogamous, wants to be a monogamous, never thought about polygamy, and I'm going to try to bring them into my relationship. Because what could go wrong? Everything. Everything. <laughs> yep. Allison says, James, are you a therapist? You could be. No, I'm not going to lie. You're no, pretty I'm wise. Um, I'm just I an old guy. <laughs> no, no, you're just um, our OG George Clooney, okay, with your salt and pepper <laughs> facial hair. I'm the urban George Clooney. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I do want to start to wrap things up a little bit, but we we find out at the end of this episode, quickly before the episode ends, that Danielle, speaking of indoctrination, Danielle, young blonde, very young Danielle, who is you know, not older Danielle in Mexico. This is young Danielle. She's gone back to the Davises. And, and I'm just like, whoa, my emotions are up and down. She's gone. She's back. Well, what, what is going on here with Danielle? She signed a lease. Right. Can you just yeah, hold JK on a lease? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I guess she's going to sublet. I don't know. Yeah. Or break the Maybe lease. it'll be the new boom, boom room. If they get four or five more women in the regular place. I don't know. Uh, I do like the idea that she would have a. Uh, I like the idea that she would have an escape route if she decides this is something she doesn't want to do. But uh, like I said before, one of the things I don't like, I don't mind people doing whatever you want to do, especially uh, as long as you're an adult. If you're an adult and you consent to doing it and you're informed about what it is you're doing, I don't have any issue. Go crazy, knock yourself out, have a great time. You know what I mean? Just don't hurt the kids. But with this. I don't feel comfortable about it because I'm not 100% sure as I'm watching it that she's okay with this yeah. situation. And I think she still has to figure some things out for herself. And she doesn't need pressure, especially from these older ladies who are trying to pressure her into doing something that she doesn't necessarily want to do. And one of the things that she might also be considering as I thought about it was there's a difference between you coming into a relationship with two women and a man that all of you are sleeping with Versus you coming into a relationship with two women, that one of those women has a child, you get to watch this child come into the world, and then you get to watch these other women, you know, mother on this child and be considered this child's mother. Maybe that's something that became a reality uh, for her. Like, if I have a baby with this guy, because you know going to try to knock her ass up. The key, and she got to be careful about that. I think you're going to try to knock up and keep her in the fold. Yeah. But, you know, if, if this happens... Am I, is this what I've always dreamt that I'm going to raise a child with these other women and have other women call my, you know, my baby call these other women mom? Am I okay with that? And that's something that she should have to answer for herself. What do you think, Sarah? What's going on with, with Danielle? I mean, you know, I, it, 
I constantly have to remember that she is so young. Um, and that is worrisome. Not a hundred percent sure how old Nick is, but I think he's in his forties. That's the yeah idea I have, I guess. Um, cause he's Ooh. been with April for a while. Um, so yeah, I, I think there is a certain amount. I think James brought up really good points that I think maybe inadvertently, if not blatantly, uh, Danielle is getting pressure from Jen and April. Like you don't like, you don't want this. Like, you know, look at how great. Like I, it, is she being pressured to conform to something she's not a hundred percent on board with? And then, yeah, mm. she, she takes this big step to leave and five seconds later, she's just right back. Right. Right. Well, because and that's and that's part of the pressure when you're dealing with like that type of peer pressure, because one of the things that bothers me about this whole thing is that if you're going to be a participant in these types of relationships, make sure you're a full partner in these relationships. Yeah. Which means that you have a say. If you don't have a say with who he dates, then you don't have a say with who he marries and you don't have a say with who he's going to bring home. And if you don't have, and if she doesn't assert herself in being able to have her voice heard, then this isn't a relationship she needs to be in, you know. And that's just my opinion. Like she can do whatever she wants to do, but I, I just wouldn't want this for, for a friend of mine or somebody I knew. Like if you don't have a voice now, this is the same thing with older Danielle with uh, Garrett. If you don't have a voice now, you can't look your man in the face and say, "Okay, yeah, let's explore get, get bringing somebody else into the relationship and somebody else into our thing and turn into a throuple." And it'll be great bring another wife in. And you agree to it. And then halfway through, you say, you know what? This ain't for me. I don't want to do it anymore. And he says, okay, you know what? You don't want to do it? We're going to stop doing it. If you don't have that ability, then this is something you shouldn't participate in. Because he doesn't care what your opinion is. And you don't have a say. You should always have a say. Mm -hmm. Jill Spear in the chat says, that's the thing. She isn't being heard. I was kind of thinking along these same lines of like, you know, when I've been with people in relationships, I've always wanted to feel like they wanted to be and should be and belonged in the relationship and were fulfilled in the relationship just as much as me. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, to me, it would be just another red flag if I'm Danielle and they're just so focused on co coercing me back in mm -hmm. and not as focused on listening to me say, I cannot have this requirement that I marry another woman. I'm not even ready to date another woman. You know, like you said, James, like there, she's, she's not really being listened to. It's, it, it just seems like red flags all over the place. And so I'm just like, why, why, why is she going back to them? But she's young, as Sarah yeah. said. And she's the only one that we've heard mention, like, I'm a new mom, blah, 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 blah. Like, okay. She didn't have the baby, but she's the only one thinking like, this might not be healthy to do to this child. And there's another child too, that doesn't appear on camera that April had from a previous relationship. So it's the, it, at least someone's thinking about the kids, I guess. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, the kids. Right. You know, what's interesting to me is it seems like online, the fan base of this show has really embraced the Davises. Mm -hmm. um, and I, maybe opinions will be a little bit more changed now that Danielle is kind of showing that this is hard, you know, a little bit hard on her emotionally and she's really struggling with whether to be in the family or not and how young she is. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of support for specifically the Davises, um, uh, compared to other couples, which I mean, if you're comparing them to like Garrick Merrifield, then yeah, he's like, you know, <laughs> mother Teresa. I read some someone's comment was like the bar is like on the floor like it's yeah. dra we're dragging the bar behind yeah. us. It's, it's so low. Right. Yeah, there's not a whole lot for them to contend with to be like the top <laughs> spot. So, well, I just wanted to say real quick, just going back to the idea of her not having a voice. I think that it's also compounded on the fact that her not having a voice about something that directly affects her. Because she because she doesn't get to choose who who he marries or he brings into the family and then she's forced to marry. You know, a lot of times when we watch these shows, we take a we take away the significance of actual legal marriage because they throw the word around so much. We don't focus on the legal marriage part of it. And them being legally married 
if he picks somebody because she hot to try it, she toting that, you know, that she toting that uh, dump truck, and he's like, this is the one I want to be with, boom, boom, boom. Now you have to marry her. And he marries a picks a partner who has gambling issues. She has alcohol or, or addiction issues. That's her wife. She has shopping issues. Like she just loves being at the store, running her credit up. She has hundred thousand dollars in credit in debt. That's his, that's Danielle's wife. That's not his wife. Yeah. And it doesn't affect anybody else in the Davis's family except for Danielle. So so the fact that she can't even say I should have a say with who I marry. Forget bringing them into the family and who he sleeps with. I should have a say in who I marry. And I'm saying, no, don't worry about it. We, this is just how the family works. Mm -hmm. That's not enough for me. Mm -hmm. Give her a better reason as to why she should be there. And like you said, Amanda, like I'm, I'm a big fan of that too. I don't want to be with anybody who doesn't want to be with me. And if you don't want to be here, I don't want to force you to be in a place that you don't want to be because it just, it just kills everybody's mellow. It just makes everybody say, yep. you know, if you're struggling with being there and it makes you, you don't want to really do this, but you're forcing her to do it anyway. It's crazy. Yeah. I don't understand it. I also don't understand when people will like beg people to stay. I mean, I get it in this instance. They're like, we just bought a house. We got a mortgage. But, um, in, you know, even in monogamous relationships, you know, like begging, please stay with me. Please stay with me. Like, oh, but now you know that they don't really want to stay with you. Isn't that? But, you know, there's other issues. I know people, relationships are complex. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I do yeah. want to give a shout out to Melly FZ. Thank you so much for the super. Wow. Melly says, thanks again for doing these lives. Makes my week. Love you guys. Thank you, Melly, for the love. I think that's a good note to end our live on. Unless, do either of you have anything more to say about the episode or the previews for next week? I am just, I'm having a blast with this show. Like it, I mean, there are some dark things brewing with the Merrifields for sure. But until we get there, I'm going to enjoy the mess for what it is. <laughs> right, right. I mean, we, we had people in the chat who were mentioning their daughter. The Merrifields had a baby and like, I don't know when the baby's supposed to come in. I'm very confused on the Merrifields timeline. So I hope yeah, they make that like clear. A, a secret baby somewhere. I don't know when they're like, going to. This is drama. It. Secret yeah. babies yeah. and uh, yeah. visa fraud and God knows what else. <laughs> uh. Wait, they have a baby with Garrick and Dan y'all have a baby? Yeah, he has a baby with somebody else. No. S supposedly Danielle had a baby fairly recently. Um, but uh, okay. yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, <laughs> right? It's a I suppose um people are basing it off the I don't know if anyone has like I don't know if she was spotted out and about pregnant, but they're um because they just sold their house and they're were listing photos with the um like primary bedroom had a, a crib in it and like mm. pink color so they think that she had a girl okay but okay i'm really glad you said supposedly because i i didn't know that this is this the main thing that we're going off we think they have a baby because they listed their house with a crib that is my understanding but okay. i could be wrong i am wrong about a lot of things so. okay well <laughs> Who knows if there's a baby, but that is dramatic if there is. <laughs> if, if someone knows something, if, if they were actually spotted and with a child, I had, hadn't heard that. So <laughs> yeah, let us, let us know next week. If you have evidence, <laughs> send us a link. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, did you guys hear though that, um, they are doing, um, like post episode, they're going live and answering questions, Danielle and oh, Garrett. Yes, yeah, oh, Sarah wow. and I chatted about this. I didn't email them my question, Sarah. Did you? No, but we're going to have to, the group, the chat, we're going to have to come up with some questions that we want yeah. to answer. We need to. I need to tune yeah. in. I, 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 we chatted about that and then I totally forgot. So I need to Same. tune in right. um, next well, week. First question I want to know is where can I find in any Bible, any, any version of the Bible where it says anything like what you just said? Yes. Like, I want to see the references. <laughs> that's what I want to see. Yes. And that's a question I think they would choose to answer. So actually, I think that's a great question for somebody to submit. Yes. Because Garrett's like, Garrick's like just that crazy. He's going to be yeah, like, right. allow me to uh, take the pulpit for a second and translate to all you plea, like what this, the Bible actually means. Yeah. Right. right. 
Well, I, I can see a situation where he says, well, it says it right here, you know, the man shall come into the woman, blah, blah, blah. Like, hey, let me see that Bible for a second, Gary. Oh, yeah, nice to have right now, asshole. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like uh, Great penmanship. You did a good job. Right? You know what I mean? These polygamous guys, they think they're all Joseph Smith. They can just right. make their own book up and do whatever they want. And I, they were staring in the magic box and then they figured it all out. Right. <laughs> all right. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us and, and staying on this journey. I have so much fun seeing you two every week. And uh, we will see you back here next Wednesday for more for episode four of Seeking Sister Wife. <laughs> The foolishness. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Uh, all right. Bye-bye, everyone. All right. Bye. Have a good one.